with the. Oh, that was loud, Kenny. <laughs> they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right hand and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching Jesus on the cross. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, huh, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers mocked, coming up and, and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is a powerful work. Oh, I didn't finish the text. I didn't realize it was that long. So you can tell that I'm accustomed <laughs> to be at my table and knowing when it's long enough. I'm going solely on the slides this morning. Now, this is the interesting thing. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him. Imagine you hanging for your for what happened to you and you're going to sit there and harass someone else that's beside of you. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replies, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. That is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Come heavenly dove, with all of your life-giving power, I do pray, touch us, God. Revive us deep within, renew us, strengthen us, God for the journey ahead. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen? Amen. As you can see, I talk about the verdict. Don't give up, finish it. Sometimes we think we finished something and we haven't. Your verdict is that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't give up, finish it. I don't care who discourages you, Finish it. Don't backpedal. Well, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm 70. Don't backpedal. God wants you to go on and, and swim into it. Don't give up. Finish it. There are so many things, as we go to the next slide, so many things in this text that comes forward because Brother Luke did not walk with Yeshua. And he's trying to give an accounting from hearsay to a brother by the name of Theophilus, who was part of the Roman government, part of the government that condemned our Lord and Savior. One of the interesting things is when they start casting lots for his clothing, the people stood by watching Jesus on the cross. Have you ever had a moment when you feel like you fell and everybody watched the fall? Everybody watched the you can't get up? Everyone took time just to watch that fall and not do anything that, girl, you better get up? The same people in the crowd were yelling Hosanna not long before this. Save us. Save us. And sometimes when you have those, those highs in your life, because everyone has to go through the valley, that's why God has to remind you there is growth even in the valley. You can't give up. You have to finish it. All of us could have been on that cross and been like the one thing that was saying, look, man, you need to do me a solid. If you're the Messiah, save us. 
exactly what he was doing. He was saving us in the suffering, in the humiliation. He was saving us. And at the same time, he was looking at how ugly we can be as human beings and still saved us. The crowd is an ugly thing. And we've all had the crowds. We've had those crowds. Luke did not say, as Matthew did in John, how the events of Jesus' death fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures. Luke had a different purpose in his writing. Instead, was to show that Jesus was the forgiving, the forgiving Messiah. If one of you fell and I came out there and then kicked you and then tried to take your clothes and we cast lots, would you forgive me? You would call 911 and say the pastor has lost her mind. No, she's really lost her mind this time. The forgiving Messiah, the forgiving Messiah. That's where Luke is coming from in his text. Now, the criminals really tell about who we are. There are times that we have to learn people will come to you for salvation. And I know in this society, we'll say, you may be the only Jesus they see. And if that is the case, then we're in trouble. They have to catch the image of the invisible God. Yes, we are representatives. But if that inner work is not happening, and they're looking to you, for example, we have to have people come up, shake their hands, put their name on the roll. Doesn't mean anything to God. If you're not in in the spirit, it doesn't matter what you sign in this realm. It doesn't matter what you say. If the Holy Spirit hasn't locked you in, you out. Oh, that's truth. And some people still say, well, I don't even know if there is a Holy Spirit. You better get to know. Some will take that essence of the Spirit and be so overwhelmed. All they can do is go lay in the floor, pass out every Sunday and Wednesday, go home and are no earthly good. Some will hold our peace, needing that, that electrifying charge of the spirit that comes through other groups and will not take it because after all, we're dignified, right? We wouldn't dare pass out. Pass out if they had called you and said you won that power ball. Oh, no, no. You would have passed out. <laughs> but there are things in this moment between Jesus and the people and God and the spirit that is just working and should be working in us. He's just forgiving. He's loving the father so much, it didn't matter. If you were obedient to your mama and daddy, there have been times, think about it. There were times when your friends, anyone, tried to get you to do something. You said, oh no, my mama told me to never. Oh, my daddy would kill me. And they can't make you do it. That's what's happening here. Jesus was like, y'all can't make me get off this cross. You're not gonna make me stop this journey of salvation. There's nothing you can say to make me abandon what my father has sent me here to do. Oh, the love of God that comes through Yeshua. The love of God. See, you see the crowd there. The crowd will watch you suffer. The crowd might be one of the people to get a rock and throw it and go, oh. <laughs> the crowd will kill you. The crowd will kill your spirit, your mind. And if you have a little bit of hope, they'll stomp on it. They'll push you and they say, hey, it's not the fall that gets you, it's the sudden stop. And they will laugh in your face. The people that were healed, fed, delivered were in the crowd. How many of you, and this is a morning you can say, God, forgive me. You know someone helped you. And it may have been for that, that moment at that intersection that you were supposed to come together and then go where you're supposed to go. And you, oh, I hate that person. I can't stop. Don't become the crowd. 
You just moved on in the growth that God was giving you and so did they. Remember your moment when the crowd turned on you and they will turn. Mm -hmm. If they turned on Jesus, they will turn on you. The wisdom that Jesus is saying, don't give up, finish it. You know, every demon in hell is like, oh, he, oh he's going to come out. Say, have them say this. He's going to stop. He's going to say, no, no, no. You people, he kept going. They're probably like, what is up with this man? Because he was a man in human flesh and they ripped his flesh from his back. Those hands that were filled with the Holy Spirit that touched people, they pierced them. And the feet that were walking all that goodness around, they tried to stomp them right into that wood. And then here comes the crowd, as if that wasn't bad enough. And not only that, in the crowd were the leaders of the day. We see it today. You can't say one thing good without someone else putting their spin on it and making it something else. If you get caught in that crowd, call us. We need to start fasting and praying for you. Because your hope is built in nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. If it was built on Stacey Abrams, yeah, you lost. But if you're hanging with Jesus, you never lose. You don't give up. You finish it. You don't give up. Those little things that you look back and you know you went halfway and didn't do, sometimes you can't go back. It never comes back around. But from this day forward, God is telling you, don't let the crowd, the naysayers, stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. God give you big visions? Go for it. Don't give up. Finish it. Everyone's not going to love and like you. Would it be nice to have that? Absolutely. Doesn't happen. So the people that Luke is writing to are Romans. These are the people that probably probably like, yeah, Pilate just gave him what he deserved. I've been there and in that crowd. And let me tell you about the worst crowd you could come across at, at times, the church crowd. Mm -hmm. Won't let you have salvation in peace. Won't let you. Won't let you speak in tongues because we don't do that here. Won't let you shout and praise God because we're dignified people. We don't do that. I don't care. I'm going to praise my God. I am never going to give up. I'm going to finish it. And sometimes when you hear some people say that uh, Pastor Charlotte is the little crazy pastor, that's because I keep going. I'm going to finish it. I'm not going to stop because of the, the words of the crowd, the community. People can all of a sudden be nice and in a minute turn on you. And you know what I do? I keep turning to God. I'm leaning on you, Lord. It doesn't matter. And what we need to realize in this realm is we all hang on the same cross. Amen. So I'm going to think, my cross is better than you. No, baby, we're on the same one. Mm -hmm. Don't let the crowd turn you back. I don't care what they say to you. At a certain point, you have to say, no. We saw that this week, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Melissa Gunn became a race car driver at the pantry. And she said, not today. She did not allow the crowd. Uh-uh. You don't even have to put up with the crowd. You don't. You just don't give up. Finish it. That's what Jesus did. He finished it. I really want you to get this. Being loved is the minimum, the minimum. Make sure you are also being respected, prioritized, supported, desired, and understood. That's your God. God is respecting you, prioritizing you, supporting you, desiring you, and understanding every part of who you are. You can be loved, but if you, that's real love right there when you get respected. 
See, people be like, I love you. I sent you a dozen flowers. And then you go checking for receipts on their phone. You be like, I thought I was the only one you loved. <laughs> or your children at times. This is love. Love respects mama and daddy and mama and, and papa. They prioritize getting up and making sure they hug mama and papa. They help them across the, the floor. See, sometimes being in love, that's just the minimum. Great, great love brings in respect. And I know the words say God is no respect or person. And guess what? That's all right in here. Because people that you think have been thrown in the trash ain't no good. And you look at God's and picked them up out of the gutter and you were part of the crowd saying, yeah, you got what you deserve. That's what you get. I've never liked you anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all, that's happened to me. Yeah. It's a hurtful thing. Mm -hmm. When the crowd turns on you and you've never done anything to the crowd, it's a hurtful thing. But don't you give up, you finish it. The enemy uses the crowd to make you stop. Don't you stop, finish it. No matter what it is, finish it. And when the crowd comes, you'll be able to be like Jesus. Forgive them, God. They don't know what they're doing. And even when some people come and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, you can get us out of this. And God may say, no, I'm not. That's not what you're called to do. You're called to finish it. Ooh, glory to God. Now you want real love. This is real love right here. And over here, I just tell you the difference. Luke is so different. He goes all the way back to Adam in the genealogy and brings it all the way up to Jesus. Being loved is the minimum. So sometimes people, I love you, love you too, boo, love you. And guess what? When it, the uh, rubber hits the road, you don't know her. <laughs> oh, you need my help. I'll get with you next week. You're not my priority. Can I at least get some support? And let me tell you what, when I say support, I mean people that will dig in and pray for you. Look, stay up all night and pray for you. And call and give you a right now word. Support you in prayer, in love, and in deed. And the thing is, the desired portion, they desire to be helpful to you, to love you, to prioritize you. Sometimes we don't even have the desire to love people and to be good to them. Check yourself. Are you part of the crowd? All of us have been. And all of us probably have had those moments when the crowd is looking at you like, mm -hmm. what you going to say now? But you must not give up, especially when the call is this powerful that God has called you to bring salvation into the entire earth. You have to ignore the crowd. So you don't give up and you finish it. So some of you need those elements as you're going of how to finish it. Here it is. Sit with warriors. The conversation is different. Hey, y'all come with me this morning. Sit with warriors. Mother Giselle, Miss Carol, sit with warriors. Miss Lena is a warrior. You need to sit with a warrior in the spirit. Because you know what? The conversation is different. You want to know why Linda's so different? Guess what? She sat with a warrior for years. Miss Brown. A godly woman, the conversation was different. Don't give up, finish it. And sometimes you're conversing with the wrong one. You need to get with a real warrior that knows how to tell you. Baby, you can have your eyes shut. You are, okay, the root is right over there. Now lay your axe right there. A warrior will help you keep the course. 
You can't go to the naysayer and ask them what's wrong. And what, you're never going to be right because you can turn around and do exactly everything they tell you to do. And you still, mm -mm, they still going to laugh. Oh, uh -huh, you see that? Yeah, she did that. <laughs> They're going to laugh in your face. I'm talking about Christians that know how to wield a sword. And don't need to cut but one time. Come on, that's that's a warrior. Miss mm -hmm. Lena's a warrior. Miss Carolyn, Miss Matt, Linda, Terry, Miss Gazelle, Patty, Paul, Kenny, a warrior. What type of conversations are you having with your children and your grandchildren? Are you giving them those spiritual fighting skills that you know you have? You should. And that means that's a totally different conversation. My grandmother used to pull me back and say, mm -mm, wait, wait. I was like, but I don't want to be last. Wait. And one time I was standing back, I said, why didn't she let me go? And they said, well, we're starting at this. And I said, oh, glory to God. <laughs> she was like, the first will be last and the last will be first. She said, but always be happy that you're in the line. And God hasn't counted you out. Don't give up. Finish it. You may have had a lot of starts, mm -hmm. but you have to finish it. Sit with warriors. The conversation is different. Maybe you've been conversing with the wrong one. Someone that just has an agenda of what they want out of you. Don't give up. Finish it. Remember as we read the passion account of Jesus, that Jesus didn't die just for nice people of this world. Uh, let me say that again. <laughs> If Jesus had just died for the nice people of this world, we would all be dead. Jesus paid the price for all humankind, their sins. That person that you don't like, and as one of the preachers always says, people I don't like and they get saved. And I go, God, why would you save them? I don't like them. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter whether you like them or not. It's up to the most high God. Oh, the conversation. Can you imagine? I couldn't imagine hanging beside Jesus. And the only sense that came was, well, we deserve to be here. We did what we did. We can't even get believers to say, we did what we did. You know what we say? It's under the blood. Well, let me stop right there. <laughs> oh, I put it under the blood. <laughs> Unless you pull that thing out and you deal with it before God. The blood represents your new co covenant. It doesn't represent hiding your bad behavior. And your disrespect in the church, on your job, or the children's disrespect to elders who they need to be sitting with and learning something. Ooh. All that believe. Don't see we the tool we have, you know, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God just had me tell you a piece of that. Stop putting stuff under the blood that you need to deal with. Don't give up, finish it. That very thing that you put under the blood may be what you need to deal with to get you over the finish line. And remember, there's always a hook in sin. When I went to the football game with Johnny and, and Kenny and Tam and uh, Sheila, uh, Johnny went to Duke. We went to Georgia Tech. I was in the crowd. I became a Duke fan. I was in the crowd. So sometimes the crowd will hook you that way. I don't care if I went to the Falcons and the 49ers and I said, Linda, I have tickets. She'd be like, it's still not like the Steelers. She'd be like, it was a good game, but it wasn't the Steelers. <laughs> that hook. Sometimes that hook is what gets you. And sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. Don't get hooked and off your game. 
Stay on your game. Don't give up. Finish it. They could not hook Jesus with anything. And sometimes people try to hook you and say, but you said you are the mother of the church. Why don't you have a mother in heaven? You said you used his own words. If you're the son of God, if you're the Messiah, save yourself. And the big agenda was saving you. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve, no matter where you are or how you are. Deal with all the things you have to. Don't give up. Finish it. If you had a habit of running, come on back. Come on. And then stop being part of the crowd. Be the one that, that's willing to go up forward and be at the, at the cross. Most of those people were women. And John. See, all those people who received healing and deliverance, they could have gone up just like them and wept and said, I'm so sorry this is happening and we don't understand. Mm -mm. Because they were afraid they would do it to them. And I'm telling you, don't give up. Keep going. Do it even if you're afraid. Don't stop. Don't let the crowd stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Not easy. It's not easy. The first paper I wrote when I put my hand to the plow, and I'll never forget Dr. Johnson said, I'm going to wait and see what the end of this is going to be. Because he said, that, that's serious what you're saying. He said, you explained it. God didn't call me to follow church norms. God called me to change the church as we know it. Because God has already done a new thing. We're just catching up. God has to allow a virus to come in for us to realize People on Zoom and on the internet need church too. So think about that, Beth Salem. All the years you've been here and we're having church, one church in two locations that didn't have to pay for two buildings. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. See, the thing is, God called me to change the church, but God called me also not to give up when God's hand was changing. You know how they do when they hit, they go, and you just dodge it, and you roll in with God. Because God is the one bringing the change. My call was to attach to that hand of change and go with it. And remember, if you don't know and you lack the wisdom, go sit down with some of these warriors that know what it is to fight the good fight of faith and make it through. Lord God, I thank you for your mercy and your truth. I thank you that you, you love us so much, God, that even if our ancestors were in that crowd, that did not stop you from saving and delivering. Your word went forth that you so loved this world that you gave your only begotten son. It didn't matter what the crowd said. It didn't matter what Pilate had to say or Herod. It only mattered what the sovereign God had to say. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God, I ask in the name of Jesus, as we all make our way to you one day, that we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, because you didn't give up, you finished it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.